Hello and welcome to another episode of Chats If Get Banged, Team Calamity's Final Fantasy TCG show. I am your host, Tom Strawman Hall, and joining to me today is my trusty sidekick, Mitchell Lander. Hello. And Mitch, it's only our second episode, but we have gone big because today our special guest is the freshly crowned UK national champion, Peter Sherratt. Woo! Hey, guys. Hey. Just to let everyone know, Peter is on a 4G connection, so he is a little bit laggy. So bear with us if he if he cuts in and out a bit. But Peter, thank you, thank you for taking time out of your new new celebrity lifestyle to join us. So how, how has it been since being crowned champion? It's been a been a bit of a while now, but have, have any things different? I mean, what sort of things have you been up to? Oh, I, I, oh it's so difficult. I, I can't go to the shops anymore without people recognising me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine it would all be like pool parties and um, like Riku cosplayers serving you grapes. <laughs> So that's good to hear it. It's actually fulfilling <laughs> fulfilling all our expectations. But cool, yeah, we should also mention we're normally joined by uh, Rich Mason, but he is he has gone off to go and get married and, and honeymoon. So congratulations, Rich, from everyone at Team Calamity. Um should point out as well actually for his honeymoon, um Rich has downloaded like all of the Final Fantasy remakes for his PlayStation Portable so that he can play them on his honeymoon. Um so yeah, that's dedication. <laughs> Peter, we, I mean, we can talk a bit about your deck. It's been talked about a lot on, on other things. Because obviously, you did actually smash the UK competition. Is that right? You only took 16 points of damage on the whole weekend? Oh, wow. Do you know, well, you told me. Ago, and I've actually forgotten. I think you're right, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've just been modest. Uh... <laughs> I can't remember. No, 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 I didn't. I took fuck all damage in Swiss, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and funny. in top eight as well. Yeah, that much. That's quite impressive. Oops, I mean, we will, we will put our link to your um, deck list in the sort of the show notes if anyone wants to sort of pick it up and have a look or give it a run. Um, oh, God. Well, if you do, don't run the Emperor Ice Legends. Yeah, so that was a bad idea, huh? So you're running suboptimal cards and you still won? Is that just you showing off now? Yeah, I was just... I just thought, you know... Yeah, just you saw you'd jack. go there with a real challenge. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean you say that, but it, it did get a bit salty at first when you won. So if everyone was sort of... weren't very happy with your deck choices and the yeah. style of your play. But I think now, I think yeah. people are on board. It's, you know, we've seen, we've seen the decks actually having a lot of success elsewhere. I mean, UK, we, there was that, was it the Emerald Cup in Brighton? Basically, mm. your deck list pretty much took that. Um, we've even seen it, Spanish Nationals. It's even popped up there and taken taken that as well. So people seem to be on board of it now. They're, do you think it's going to be a sticker? or? Um, well, uh, will Mono I stay <laughs> in Opus 6, do you mean? Or Well, your particular bearing uh... of it. You were quite heavy ag- aggro and discard, so... Is that the best way to play Mono Ice, do you think? I, I, I play Mono Ice a little bit differently. I go, um, I get, I get, um, sorry, no, my son's just run into the room and he's like, he's like, wanting to play Winnie the Pooh. Wait, right, hold on. Yeah, so, <laughs> what did you say? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he's like Daddy. and he's just like playing Winnie the Pooh I'm just like trying to answer your question I think we're basically um, asking well, if your two year old son could pilot your deck and still have success yes he could yeah because Mono Ice mono, uh, is, is, um, it's one of the easier decks to play um, I chose it going into the match because I wanted to prove a point and no one really believed me that how um, degenerate and um, disgusting discard is right now and um i wanted to play in a way where i um, could really rush my opponent and um you know sometimes uh, uh, it was actually really disgusting how quickly i won the game um and obviously took very little damage it wasn't nice and so peter let's rather than talk about how great your deck is flip it on us tell us how we can beat it What's the weakness? What should we be doing to, to stop all? It's not just you now. There's a lot of people are running this. So what what do yeah. we do to stop you? 
You stop the discard. There's very, very little you can stop the discard, but the Dun and Freeze mechanics, there, there are ways to stop that. Um, the deck as a whole, um, you're not going to open that all the time. So there are decks like you've got a defensive Mono Earth and you've got Wind Earth with uh, Adaluma Ping with a Cactuar. Yeah, exactly. Uh, of... Wind Earth was, was one of the things you were saying you were sort of slightly concerned about going into it. That was sort of the one you were worried about coming mm-hmm. up against. Mm-hmm. I suppose you did, I mean, looking at your draws, you got quite lucky throughout the competition. You didn't, you didn't really come up against your, your worst matchups. You avoided the country's best Wind Earth player altogether. There was luck on my side uh, there, yeah. I played one Wind Earth player and that was it. So before we move on and get into sort of the main meat of the show, I think now that you're a big time player in the FFTCG, <laughs> we, need, we need a nickname for you. you know, we've got the London bad boy, uh, Mr. Cool. Is there someone like a potato head or something? <laughs> Isn't there one? Potato. Yeah, it's Mr. Potato Head from Toy Story. I'm sure there's a potato one, but basically, you need a you need a badass name. Um, uh, we've been coming up with some ideas for you um, uh, from Team Calamity. So, Mr. Humble. Oh. Uh, um, no, we don't, we're not having that one. No, actually, no. <laughs> uh, so the, the fur, other end of the spectrum, someone suggested Foil Head. <laughs> yeah, I, like that one. I like that. The, uh, the, 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 the senior hairline is real, guys. It's real. Foil head, it is then. Yeah. All right. Nice one. Well, that's a keeper. All right. So we'll move on to our first of our regular features. Uh, so we're going to start with the haste takes uh, this time to give you guys a chance to get in the flow a bit. Um, so, Peter, if you're not aware of what this is, so we basically give you a topic and you have 30 seconds to uh, passionately talk about that topic and then oh, you've only got 30 seconds though so we do cut you off so make sure you know you're professional and concise if you didn't and don't listen, time yourself yeah so if you if you listen to our first episode <laughs> it became quite apparent that rich knew all the topics in advance and was also timing himself so he came uh, at, he uh, came across really knowledgeable and um like he knew what he's talking about but it's because he was cheating. So from now on, there's no time itself timing, and I can verify that you guys don't know these topics in advance. Um, no, we don't. It's we more don't in know. the spirit of the feature. Um, who wants to go first? Mitchell can go first. <sighs> All right, Mitchell, I'll go first. Yeah, this is uh, right. gonna be ready. Shite. <clears throat> right, let me get into position. Yep, ready. Okay, Ooh. so the first topic, Mitchell, is how do we stop the new Estinian? Uh. With removal, summon removal, anything really. Uh, Hecaton's nice. I just don't block it. Is probably the best thing, advice you can give against it. It's. I don't think it's that good to be honest. It's it's got its perks in haste, but just to kill it with chaos will or something like that. It's not a problem. Is that thirty seconds? We've got four seconds left. <laughs> oh. Uh. Okay. Sloppy yeah. Start. Sloppy start. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't that good. <laughs> it's all right. So basically, it's not very good. That's oh, fine. No, well, I could do a long chat about it, but in 30 seconds, it sums up, it's not no, something fine. something to get really worried about, I feel. All right. Peter, it's your turn. Um, I'll give you a nice easy one. Uh, so, Opus 6, should I buy a box or use the money on singles that I want? Oh. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> five seconds, mate. But yeah, singles. <laughs> singles. <laughs> Is that it? Singles. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Boxes cost like hundred pound, right? Why would you do that? unless you might make looking to make the whole collection? All right, that'll do. That's. About fair <laughs> All right, maybe. I know a lot of people buy boxes. Maybe. Don't get me wrong. I know Mitch, you're buying two boxes, yeah. etc., etc. But uh, I don't personally. I don't. I like to just trade my stuff for my stuff. I don't like not like spend that much money. I mean, it's, it's all gone out the window. I keep stopping and starting the timer. So um, next one, uh, Mitchell. This one is for you. We'll try and rescue this a bit. All um, right. So there's a heat wave in the UK at the moment. Is this some kind of divine sign that we should be playing fire? 
Actually, yes. Like, I've been a big fan of the uh, of Fire, mainly uh, Saz and Daj, just because they're so shit, they're good. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but no, I think Fire Water with some of the Final Fantasy Two could be a real big thing in this new set. So it might actually see a bit of play, and then people realise it's bad again and just stop playing it. But it will have its moment in this set, I think. Nice. That's 30 seconds. Well, we're back on track by <laughs> Peter, and this is the, this is the last one. So this is a little bit little bit spicy, a little bit controversial. Um, you ready? Oh, oh no, mate. <laughs> so this one is. Um, I'll, I'll give you the general. So going abroad to compete in other countries' nationals. Wow. Thank you for this question, Tom. I love you. <laughs> This is really controversial, um, but my stance on it is that I don't think it should be allowed, personally. Um, I know a couple of people have gone quite recently, and people other people plan to, but no, I think there's a reason why they have, you know, the, the different language text on the cards. There's a minimum requirement, but um, the fact that you can just go to last chance qualifier and just, you know, qualify for it that specific country's nationals is not right. I just don't agree. Okay, um, I'll give you an extra 10 I, seconds there because you are the champion. Yeah, if, but... if I had longer to talk about He did Elm and go, thanks for this. <laughs> yeah, I'll edit it into the no first. Yeah, no disrespect to the people who had already, who have already qualified. You've had your time. You've had your time. <laughs> yeah. had his yeah. work. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear! Please it's disregard a... anything he said after the thirty seconds. This is what <laughs> this is. This is what Rich said. He said, "I'm going away, but you know, don't worry. Just get a guest in. It'll be fine." Like, All right. Oh bless you! I miss Rich. Oh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've only been on this show ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I do know I miss Rich in general. <laughs> not, like the way you're talking about. It. I don't, not. I, not on the self I've been on the podcast so long, so, He's not yeah. dead, he's just got a <laughs> funny bit. <laughs> Alright, that's I'm gonna call time on the haste takes because there was an absolute shit show today. Um Oh no we, really <laughs> we'll Well the first two were a bit of a fucking disaster. Uh, yeah, we can do them, we can re record them if you want. No, because now you know the topic. Oh shit, yeah. Alright, it's slowly getting there. Okay, so we'll move on to today's Ronso Rage. So again, Peter, because I know you didn't listen to the first episode. Um, so the Ronso Rage is where we take a subject that is maybe causing us and some anger or the community anger, and then we just sort of thrash it out, get everything off our chest. Um, so today is an interesting one because I think actually both sides of this Ronso Rage could have equal anger for different reasons. And so the topic we've gone for is the idea of rotation. Um, so, Mitch, before we get into it, I'm very new to TCGs as a whole. Can you just explain what rotation is? Okay, so rotation is, in terms of like magic and Hearthstone, which is presumably what they're going to bring in, um, at a certain point, they'll bring out a set, and you won't be allowed to play a previous set. So, for example, say they brought it uh, rotation into Opus 6, You'd be able to play Opus 6, but they would take away Opus 1, so you wouldn't be allowed to use all those cards. So, Peter, you're quite pro-rotation. Um, yeah. Start getting angry at me about why why you want this. <laughs> well, I've got some friends who said they will actually rage quit if rotation comes. I just laughed. I think it's just a tad hyperbolic. I'll continue playing this game if when rotation comes. Uh, for playing other TCGs, rotation is really, and or banless, is really healthy for the game. Um, I don't, if people can't see that, I think uh, they're a bit deluded. Um, but, uh, yeah, so you're totters now, boys and girls. And now, um, <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm going to sound like a right pussy old here. Um, uh, am I allowed to swear? No, yeah, it's fine. Play the game. Uh, it's the people that play the game. Which make me come back every week. Not just the game, I mean. I loved you, Gabe, but the people just fucking cancel, man. I just, uh, that's my take on it anyway. Okay. <laughs> straight, straight slightly from rotation. Uh, Mitch, you want to bring us back in and talk about why people would be unhappy with rotation? Um, most, I would say the biggest issue is that people have spent money on their cards. Some of them have decided to foil out all of their decks and 
want all the cards in foil. And if uh, they bring in a rotation, yeah, there'll be there'll probably be a format where they can play it, but in um, the the main format. This this is if it becomes the main format. The main format, you won't be able to use them, so they're basically just useless cards. So people are upset that they've spent money on this, not being told that there would be a rotation is a big thing, and then um, just basically just losing money. And while I see Peter's point and uh, partly agree with it, I do think if they are to bring in uh, a rotation, they should have said something a long time ago about it. Mm. Mitch, yeah, um, you know a hell of a lot more about chapters than I do. But I was someone messaged me the other day um, regarding rotation, uh, and he said that the evokers came out in a similar time uh, to now, like um, yeah. with uh, chapters, and there was no rotation. There wasn't any. No, so, in um, in chapters the were... in chapters the main format uh, there was no rotation. But they brought out a separate format which had rotation, which is why those evokers came in. Mm. <coughs> which was it is the also main format, or was it no, just no, a separate? It, it was a separate format, like title series and stuff like that. Interesting. So I think we'll probably do the same thing, right? Yeah, that that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. I th- I think this is all right. Everyone's blown it out of proportion because we d- we don't know what's going to happen. But we love to but, blow things out of proportion. Yeah. We love to talk about stuff, <laughs> but chat um, shit. yeah, we like to chat shit, get banged. <laughs> nice. I mean, I'll, from my point of view, because I'm obviously fairly new to this game, so I've been working quite hard to sort of go back and collect all the older cards. So I'd be quite be quite harsh if I finally get them and I can't really use them. So I can see why it could be a bad thing, but I also understand. Well, I don't know if I do understand the reasons why he'd bring it in. I just I don't really see the point of it, to be honest. Um, like you said, well, things, things like Shantotto is such a staple, <clears throat> and just get rid of it because it's good. I don't know. I mean, there's ways to play around it, and there's counters to everything. It, but there's, it just brings variety in decks. Like, for example, people say Mono Weiss is degenerate now because it's so... You have your six package, you have your discard package... That's basically your forwards done. You've got your Edward because, and then you've got your Celestis Council Summons. So that's like basically ev- everything is set. And then you've got your summons. You basically go for the same thing. You might in, add in a Chuck in uh, Matthias or Zillero. You might do a few things different, but it's only going to be like a couple of cards different. If you take away Opus One, you lose your Argath, so you can't do is reduces the first turn double discard you lose your duke lark all colors will lose their boosters so mono decks would get hit quite hard with that so it sort of um forces variety in decks now is if it was to come through i don't as i said i don't think it will come through but it would force um variety in decks and eventually even cars like genesis would be taken out vv can't go on it um <coughs> and then i uh, so you forgot Jill Nabar. Say again? You forgot Jill Nabar, man. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, that, man. Yeah, that's fine. Rest in peace, Jill Nabar. Uh, yeah. For that reason, Potent- they probably can't do it, can they? No. Although, at least Peter could get up from the table then. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't have to, you don't have to bring that special cushion. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the other thing as well is the new set has... And the newer sets we're seeing, they tend to bring a lot of synergy to older cards. So, like, it just seems counterintuitive to bring out more combos and then at the same time take them away. Yeah. As, as I said, I'm ad- almost adding, like, almost certainly it's not going to uh, go through because of, the, like, stuff like that. Like, they've added in um, the new Laguna that searches Squall. Now, if if they do the rotation, there was four schools to be uh, searched, and if they take away Opus One, there's then two. Then the next set, there'll only be one, and it's like, how how why would you bring out a Laguna that searches Squall if you're just going to take away the sets? So I, I I don't really see it happening personally. Yeah, I can't see it happening. 
either. I mean, presumably at some point that would then come back in, would it? Or is that it? It would be Opus 1's gone and it's I mean, gone it, forever? Or? It, it depends how they would want to do it. But most, I, I can't think of an example of when they would, uh, of any time that they do bring in a set back in. But normally it is, if it's rotated out, it's not coming back in. <clears throat> Sometimes they'll do like a ban list where they'll ban certain cards like <clears throat> Genesis. Um, but then some, sometimes that will rotate. Like in Yu-Gi-Oh, they would ban a card, and then after a while they'll start to bring it back in just when it's less strong, just to like balance it a little bit more. Yeah, I can't see it happening. I think a lot of the... Um, we've seen lots of sort of dominant decks, and they've been and gone, and new things come up. Yeah. So I there's, think... There's, almost, there's counters to almost every, everything, like maybe apart from discard, but even then you, there is ways to play around it. The rotation is so, not going to fix a discard anyway because it's consistent throughout all of the the different releases. So. Yeah, they they've just released a new well in Opus Five they released a new card that basically does the discard early turn. So you're going to have to wait five sets for that to be sorted out anyway. Peter, do you want to close off yeah. on this? Run I think what we're saying is there's no there's not going to be a rotation. So do you have oh, a me- no, do you have a message for do you have a message for people who are getting angry because they want to see rotation? Do you want to have a message for them to sort of calm them down and tell them to get on with it? <laughs> Being a, I mean, coming um, from coming from a winner. Oh man! I don't know if I can do that. Yeah. You cut me up, man! Oh my god! No, that's maybe I've gone too strong. You want me to say? You want me to say why it's good? Just tell no, everyone just, to stop being bitches. Is basically to, what yeah, saying. basically, it is a look. Oh, bitches. Do you know what? Actually, it is, it is. It's difficult because, like you, you both made very valid points. I mean, the game's only been going two years, right? So there's actually not that many cards. So you are rotating out people's collections. Like people might only have like Opus, you know, one to four, and they've only got a few of Opus five still trying to collect that. You know, so I just think that it would be a little bit out of order. So I do get people's anger. I mean, two people, like I said, two of our close mates, you know, were going to rage quit. <laughs> just, uh, it's almost worth, it's worth bringing it in just to get rid of those guys, isn't it? We won't name their names. But... Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's do a petition. Everyone tweet Kagiyama just so we can ditch some of the Deadwood at Team Calamity. <laughs> um, all right. I think we're called cool, cool time on the Ronto Rage. I think there's arguments for either side seems to be the wise people making the most noise are on the bring in rotation and so maybe the answer is just come up with lots of new decks it's mostly because people are getting shit stomped by ice at the moment so let's all come up with some new ways to beat ice and everyone will be happy again and they can all play mono earth shantotos with wall and then everyone will be happy yeah all right so on to sort of happier topics uh, this week seen the release of the Opus 6 pre-release. And Mitch and Peter, I know you went to a couple of different events. Um, I obviously went to the Calamity Comics one, um, sort of our locals. Um, how did you get on? Good fun? Did you get any good good pulls? Um, yeah, the, we went. obviously we went to the Calamity one. Um, the pulls were great, but it was, it was good fun. Like, I always enjoy pre-release because it's just completely random. You just just play just and just really just have fun and it was great and then uh, me and peter went to the brotherhood one and that was incredible as well I want to give a shout out to alex and all the uh, people at brotherhood um just to say like thank you for having us it was great fun great uh, experience and definitely going again i would advise a lot of people to go go there uh, check it out because i was <clears throat> as i said it was a great experience and you get free you- burgers aren't you uh, yeah, there's loads of food and uh, just, as I said, loads of food, drink, uh, everyone was great fun. And, yeah, I'd recommend it to absolutely anyone. Are you happy with your ice tokens? Because I know that's caused a bit of, bit of derision. Oh, um, for <laughs> Is it just UK Why? or the Europe? <laughs> the Europe? Do you remember when you said it was a happy subject? <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah. Well, actually, you did, yeah, I'll bring this out now because... I was actually going to run so rage this myself, but I went to pre-release and my pack, I had like zero legends 
And I think I got about three heroes at the whole thing. And I, I was just, a, yeah, I was so pissed off. I had a shit night and I just moped around sulking. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. I was so excited as well. Because I, 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 I did Opus 5 pre-release. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't really know what was going on. Um, I didn't really, it took me a long while to realise that you got a foil in every packet. And I didn't really understand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my so first, tall, when I first... you get a hero in every packet as well. So when you said you only got three heroes, yeah, I was instantly like, "You don't uh... get? Do you get a hero in every pack? Minimum? Yeah. No. So that's why so I was a bit like, no, that's solid. At least. <laughs> no, I haven't. You, you, you probably, probably don't have no. any heroes. Right. <laughs> you guys, you guys talk. <laughs> I'm going to get my stash out. You, you chat about pre-release. I'm going to count them, and then we'll, I'll come back to you. So you have, go and have a little chat. There's no. That doesn't include the guy that you get one in the box. That doesn't count. Yeah, no, that's no, not included. Right. They, are, oh, they are they are packs, packs, and you get a hero minimum in each, packs. and then you get a foil a as well. Each, yeah, a hero yeah. minimum. No, so, okay. mate, what is wrong? Right. With you? You tell and me he's about... saying like Opus Five. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that's changed. <laughs> yeah, I thought I knew what was going on. Oh man. Who let me host this? Hey, man, I want to say that why the fuck are Square releasing different products at different fucking regions? <laughs> like, North America, they get sleeves, like, you know. Like, I, I actually quite like them. And the, the Yanks, they're like, no, 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 no. But, like, the EU, we get freeze tokens. It's like, that does not compete. I'm sorry. And why did Japan get nine packs? Yeah. By the way, Tom, you, you get nine heroes from that. So, like, it's just... <laughs> uh, it's hacks, man. It's hacks. It's favoritism. Kagiyama's in on it. It's just a conspiracy. So you, wanted, ahead, you want you want sleeves in everyone? I thought it was quite nice I'm, doing different. Oh, I like sleeves. You know last time. I'd rather I'd rather get rid of sleeves. Get rid of the shitty ice tokens. Just give us the three extra packs. Just give you packs. Yeah. I'd what like they they did it in one set. I can't remember. Was it Opus three or f- four? They gave us nine nine packs, and it was amazing. And then they were like, all oh, right, now you've experienced greatness. We're going to take it away because you're shit and you're not Japanese. But it was like, quite cheap. It was only 20 cheap. quid. <coughs> yeah, so it was. The would be like 40 quid or something, wouldn't it? No, no, it was like 30 oh. or something. So, yeah. And I'm pretty sure you got something with sleeves anyway. Because I know in Japan you get nine packs and sleeves. So you, you get the... the Best, um, you don't get those shitty ice tokens. You get the best um, free gift, and you get nine packs. So this has, this is turning into a Ronso rage. <laughs> well done. <laughs> it into a race. That wasn't my. T- I thought it was just me who got shortchanged. I'm still counting, by the way. So you know, keep talking. I'll, I'll come back to you. Uh, it was out of order. The fact that they give packs more packs to Japan, North America got sleeves, and we got tokens. I yeah. quite like the tokens. I, I mean, like the tokens, but I'm I sorry. Didn't, I didn't like the last sleeves. It should be uniform sleeve. throughout. Every product should be uniform throughout. It should be consistent throughout the whole of Final Fantasy pre-release. One region shouldn't get one thing, one region shouldn't get the other. I think that's wrong. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Like, I just think... I don't understand why it's different. It's, it's just going to cause issues. If, if they wanted to... Um, gives people different stuff. They could rotate it, like give Opus don't, don't 5, say, give, give you a... the R word. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they could give Op- Opus 5, they could give you like the shitty ice tokens. The Opus 6, they could give you sleeves. Opus 7, they can give you, I don't know, like tears for, you to, for when you're being discarded. I don't know, like they could give you just free stuff. So everyone can and keep it, yeah, keep it the same. So actually you didn't really have a great time at pre-release. I mean, no, no. <laughs> okay, I will say this. If you never have a box of Opus 6 to anyone else who wants to do like a sealed draft, things like that, I actually saw Alex um, post on uh, FFT Studio Fans um, today or yesterday whenever about it, and I completely 100% agree with him. It was an amazing event. I, I loved that the, the one-drop... Uh, uh, standard unit backups in there really ha- help excel the pre-release. And I just felt that there were so many little combos. Yeah, uh, that's that's one thing I do right. agree on. Like the Opus Six is probably the best uh, draft 
pre-release I've been to, like, you can make such, like, actually quite good decks out of what you got. And that was probably due to, like, the one-drop backups and uh, some of, the, like, the cards. Because they search so much, you could actually get quite a consistent deck out of it. Whereas previously, I didn't, I didn't think that was possible. It was just, oh, did you get this card? It searches one card in your deck. If you didn't get that card, well, then it's a dead card sort of thing. See, I quite like putting the searches in. But then just to, and then you just have a look and see if actually that exists. So like you play and it says search for this card and you're like, is it in there? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's an opus one. And then it's just <laughs> got to have some fun when you lose. Yeah, I mean, I suppose they just have. In fact, that's another thing I want to bring up while we're on uh, the pre-release and opus six. Why? Is it, why? It seems to be there's less cards in this set. Oh, why? The helmet- there. I swear, like, there was like 140 or something like that, but then one stop was taken up by the one drops. I'll try and find out how many cards were in Opus 6. I don't think I, I Yeah, can just, just be tell. careful, Mitch, because it could be a bold claim. Um, and then yes. you're going to get shot down. So just on yeah, that note, I've just, the count is in on my hero count. Um, and I'm, I'm, I've, oh, got, oh, there we go. I've got six heroes. <laughs> <laughs> what but, a surprise! But let me just let me just say one of them was Spiritus, which searches a dark. Was it? Yeah, search which, for one dark form. Right, which yeah, I couldn't. Fighting privilege unless you have Nidhogg. So. Oh yeah, there was Nidhogg. Yeah, but but I got no legends. So that's fine. The other one was Dark Lord, which if I played him, I lose ten of my forty cards. So I was tempted, but I didn't go down that route. I did get six. I retract my, retract my initial uh, disappointment. Well, I still, no, legends, say anything, no legends. No legends. No legends is valid. I think uh, someone legends. got like four. So maybe he took my pack when I wasn't looking. So I looked at Nidhogg and I, I can't remember. If, if, is that the last card in the set? And uh, there's 130 cards in this set. Wow. How many so, are there normally? Uh, well... Well, Opus One was a a big set. Opus One was the biggest, wasn't it? Was, it was it was a big set. It had the starter decks and stuff like that. But um, there was two hundred and sixteen. Is it? If I can remember yeah. correctly. Opus Five was the second biggest. So yeah, we've just got a mini set this time around. Yeah, we? I'm just trying to think. What was Opus Four? Legends or Shadow Lord? Was it? Mate, you got a good memory. I think it was. Yeah, yeah. Shadow Lord. Kefka, Shadow Lord, I think. Yeah, so Shadow Lord was 148 Legend. So it's, it's 18 cards that we've been, like, gypped on. Well, in fact, more, because you get Evokers as well. Oh, yeah. So what well, you're saying I is... Well, Seven has got the starter decks, is not it? <clears throat> it's got that double pack of Emperor and Furion, so next set we're going to get a big one, just before Worlds. Yeah, that's true. So, we could. so what you're so, saying is, really, there should have been even more opportunity for me to get some... Good cards. Yeah. Then... yeah, so you really just so somehow screwed up. Well it's a minimum one hero a pack. I like it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like right. every time. Oh, um, mate. I love you. Oh, I love you. Man. I'm having a shocker. All right, I think I'm, I'm going <laughs> to... Let's move, let's move on away from pre-release. All right, so we'll finish, as usual, with our Cosmo memory. Peter, as the, the guest, you've chosen our memory for today, and you've gone for Wacka, the starter card. Um, so I'll just quickly go through Wacker. So he is, is a 4CP water forward, job blitz baller, obviously 10 category. And when Wacker attacks, choose one forward you control until the end of the turn it gains 1,000 power for each forward you control. He's 8k power and he has a special status reels, which is one water and a special, which is choose one forward until the end of the turn. It loses all its abilities and its power becomes 1000. Uh, tell us about why you love Wacker. Oh my god, I can't believe you're giving me time to talk about this card. I literally love it so much. He was so awesome in Opus 1. Um, I think I played him Opus 2 actually in a win water variant as well. Um, so I very... I remember playing Cooch with his combo in certain things. But yeah, um, I think he pretty much went out of favour when Opus 3 came with the 9 engine, etc. But, um, but yeah, Wacker. People just don't block him. Um, it was amazing, you know. And obviously you mentioned his special, right? Um, it's uh, offensive or defensive. And he just was just ready-made for just um, great um, simple combat tricks. 
Um, as time goes by, I think mono decks will just get better and better, and um, I think it just um, the backup will always see play over him. And, uh, rest yeah, in peace, man. That's the shame about Wacker, isn't it? The backup, backup Wacker is yeah, the, it's, the booster, it's, and boosters are quite essential yeah. for a lot of decks. Essential, hundred percent. It's just not fair for Wacker. It's very it's thematic, hardest. though. So I mean, it does fit in with him giving the boost. Obviously, he's like the the team captain. Uh, Pete, you didn't actually, you haven't really played much Final Fantasy X anyway, have you? So your love of Wacker is more for the card than the actual character. Yeah, I just thought the card was amazing, and um, I fell in love with Tidus and you know and Wacker and um, yeah, so. Uh, I've been told um, by a couple of my friends, um, and uh, they said to try it, and I have yet to. I did start it, and um, I will finish. <laughs> I will finish. It. Yeah, Mitchell, I'm sorry, Mitchell. Okay. But let's not of... take let's not take away from Wacker's moment in the in the yeah. sunshine. Mitch, it's to... literally <laughs> amazing. Do you remember him? Opus one, Mitch. How a power? Yeah. How you did not block that forward. No, no. You said never. Wacker boost himself or you could obviously boost other people if, if you think they weren't going to block him but oh my god it, he was a powerhouse he was never blocked well, I, seem, sa- I seem to remember him in opus 2 that there, there was um a deck that i don't think it was around for long but it was wind water mm. and what you would do is you'd set up your board and you'd use wind forwards and there would be like ones that get value so there was that bart's mannequin that activated two wind characters or something yeah, like that I, wonder, I remember yeah that. and then there'll be like bart's which you activate three see. winds and then you'd have i think it was warrior light you'd have cecil and you'd have this massive board and then you'd swing with waka or tedas but it was one or the other and it would just be a huge thing that you would never block, and that's how they would win. They would have like it would be a sort of either, right as well. Yeah, as it'd same. be a giant stalemate. But then this card would keep swinging through, and there was nothing anyone could do because it was it was yeah. just such a big board. Actually, I did play Opus Two. You just triggered me, um, Renoa, the Legend Renoa. I remember you status reeling her to death. I remember that because yeah. obviously it loses her abilities. So when she goes to the break, she doesn't dull your forwards, so you can swing with your Tidus then and stuff like that. But, um, yeah. Good. So I still think this, Is there this an argument for potential. bringing it back? Oh, it can't be brought back because the backup Wacker is so relevant, right? It's just so good. I don't um, know. I, I, Because it's not a dull ability, his status reels, I think it's, it could be all right. I don't it know. Would, it would wreck walls. I don't know. It's well, it would wreck wall. No, no. His auto ability goes on the stack. Yeah, but if you do it before that, if you do it before. Is it main phase? Oh, no, it's main well, phase, oh, isn't it? Right. Oh, right. What yeah, you wouldn't be able. To, we wouldn't be able to attack. do wall because it's main at the beginning of main phase, isn't it? No, it's no. It's the about attack, phase. attack phase. Oh, so you could you're do it. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. You're 100 percent right. Yeah. yeah. So you can do his ability. Yeah. The way I I see it is you could do. Um, Similar to how Earth Wind, they'll do like um, Cactar, and then they'll do Barbarisha. This offers another Barbarisha. Oh, it's a free CP as well. It's it's, yeah. it's ridiculous because Diabolus does it too. Yeah. Five CP, but then obviously that That's... gives you so much utility. It's a badass card. Whereas yeah. Wacker, if you're running dual color, yeah, you could throw it in there, depending on what you're going to do. But, I mean, if you're running mono water, you can't run the... No, uh, I, I think this work is all right in a dual color deck, but not in mono. Like, I would never play this in mono, a mono deck. Uh, but, uh, as I said, I think there is potential with it, it especially with like cards like Cactar now and Dancer and stuff like that. You could do it like that, and because it's choose one forward, whereas Diabolos, uh, Diabolos is choose one four or less. So you could choose like okay. new sure. new Nid, Nidhog if it was causing you trouble or something like that. It's just <clears throat> it, it can get rid of stuff, so it's quite nice. It it even would uh, help against Dadluma. Yeah, you get yeah. the you get the first four K ping because it's been chosen. But then it loses its ability, so you can just ping it off with, like, Cactar, whereas normally it would ping for 8k then. It doesn't now because it's lost its ability, which is something that Barbarisha never offers. 
So it's quite yeah. exciting. So is there a campaign for Bring Back Wacker? Oh, oh, I would lead that campaign to death, man. <laughs> it's cool. I'm a, it's... I'm a, I would campaign for Jill and the Bar. I'd campaign for Farmatage. I'd campaign for Devout. When you asked me a cause of my memory, I was like, it was really difficult. But I swear you said to, to uh, for a finder club that didn't see play. And I I love Devout, Jill, uh, Farmatage, obviously Farmatage sees play. But the vow is um so the vow is uh I loved that card when it first came out. I told Mitchell I would like be messaging him till like one in the morning, like, I love the vow, I love the vow. Because it reminded me of Monster Reborn. I was just like, This card is just so good, you can just bring back stuff. But again, Ice only really has that utility, um and I just think that's a bit wrong as well. Like it shouldn't have a, it should be a universal Wind, bit. <coughs> Wind has it in a like not many people remember the card, but it's a five drop uh oh, wind devout. A two drop or less, is it? Yeah. And um, which I think yeah, it's could, fit. No, because like previously, Legend Maria. No, pre previously it was shit, but now if you think about it, you play that five drop, choose your Ranger, get that back, get a monster back, le- like Laic or something like that. You've just got yeah. like, basically three cards. You've got a backup forward and monster just just for that. But Yeah. But back to, back to Waka, I would say... <laughs> Can this... we focus on Waka, please? That's the point of this segment. <laughs> but no, no, back to, back to Waka. I actually think that while the attacking part of Waka isn't that relevant anymore because removal is so prevalent, yeah, yeah. I think status reels is prevalent. And really? I think that... We could run our Waka. Let's test it this week, yeah, That's then. a challenge, I'll then. Test it. Yeah. Bring no, back I'll Waka. This week. It, it, then, I would genuinely think pod, let, I'll let you know how it got on. Uh, well, yeah. you let everyone know because I probably won't be on. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I genuinely think it could fit into like, like it would have to be like a wind water ping deck. Maybe just trying to think what else because you could do like um, remove uh, power reduction as well. You have got like Tomberry, so you reduce it with Waka's status reels, and then power reduction is so oh, good as well. Yes, yeah, Tomberry's. Yeah. Actually, you make, I don't know this card off by heart right now, but you mentioned Estinian earlier, and obviously a lot of people rave know that card, and people think more Lion is going to be Tier 1 or, or see some play. So um, what does its ability do? Does it enter the stack? Is it when Estinian attacks, you choose no, it's, one? No, it's when it blo- it's blocked. Block or is blocked, when isn't it's it? Blocked. So, so this, would record, record, this would do record you do make it lose abilities when it enters the attack phase to make it a 1k and lose yeah, ability? So, yeah, so when it swings, you could status re- lose its abilities and then block it, and it's 1k. Really? You could do yeah. that? Yeah. So, by the way, lay boys and girls, my line in <laughs> shit is not going to see play because my boy Wacker going to shit all over <laughs> you. <laughs> Wacker is the answer. All right, on yeah, that note, is the I answer think... answer to the meta, boys. Water's coming back. Layla Viking is coming. Coming home. So on that sound note, bring back Wacker. He is the answer. <laughs> We're going to close out today's podcast. So thanks very much, everybody. Peter Mitchell for joining us. Um, Peter, we might see you again in future episodes. We'll assess how this has gone. Um, this could be your second podcast after the Crystal Tower that you're not going to be invited back on. But <laughs> we'll see how it comes out. Um, if you want to ca- keep up with all things Team Calamity, you can follow us on YouTube, uh, which is Team Calamity FFTCG. Um, Peter, you've actually just started a new sort of team battle series. Um, so those videos are now on there. Uh, we had the Una Young team from uh, Scotland up against Team Calamity That's in the crazy. first matchups. Um, yeah, you can also follow us on Facebook, which is <laughs> Team Calamity FFTCG. So feel free to come on and, and send us comments. We'd like lots of feedback for this show if you've got topics you want us to discuss maybe you want to come on maybe maybe not this show (laughs) maybe not this well yeah you can you can slag off how bad episode two was i was gonna say i come on so it was always going to be bad anyway yeah sometimes being the champion is not it's not all of that (laughs) (laughs) oh shit shout out joshua freeman birch went to the french nationals um and he got top four so big congrats to him Making your eyes. Well done, Joshua and Peter. We've also had confirmation this week. You you are actually invited to Euros. Ah, this is a meme, you know. Like I was in this random chat, and they were saying like, "Oh no, I'm not in Euros." And I was like, "What the fuck am I not in Euros? What are you on about? What more could I do?" 
I won the fucking thing. So I messaged, uh, what's his name? Tim. And he said, yeah, you're in Euros. Full stop. He's like, oh, cool. Nice. Um, any more name drops before we, we finish off? Oh, what are you like, man? But no, no, it's, it's fun. It's fun. Thank you for having me on, Tom, Mitch, and uh, of us. Obviously, I'm no rich. I haven't got that velvet, sexy voice uh, of his, you know. But uh, he's a lot yeah. more professional. I give him that. I would just like to shout as well to DJ Cutman for providing our musical interludes in the background. You can check him out on Spotify and on his Bandcamp. He's got lots of sort of Final Fantasy remixes and other video game stuff. So really cool. On that note, I'm gonna say goodbye. Uh, until next time, chat stiff, get banged. <laughs> <laughs>